Hey coaches, welcome back. This is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org and Coaching Youth Football Tips and Talk Podcast. How are you guys doing today? Today, I'm going to quickly or try to quickly go through coaching mistakes in youth football. These are some that I've made, others have made, I've seen, and all this good stuff. I think there's like 50 of them, so not too sure that'll be quick, but uh, let's jump into it. Before we do, please head over to CoachParker.org if you're looking for a new playbook. Tons of stuff over there. And please subscribe. So what is the first coaching mistake that I see? There's a lot of coaches, number one on the list, that is still doing daddy ball, especially at quarterback or the top running back. And, you know, that really just decimates the team, esprit de corps with the with parents and every. You know, there's just a lot of people that can see that's going on, especially if your son or another coach's son isn't really the best kid to play in those positions. So if you think nobody sees it, a lot of people do. So and most of the time when we beat people is because uh, they're playing daddy ball in certain positions. So I see a lot of that going on. So uh be careful if you're playing or doing daddy ball kind of stuff and make sure if your son is playing a top position that uh, you haven't put him there uh, out of preference and a bias. Make sure maybe your other coaches agree with that. So the second one is promising players, certain positions on teams. When you're recruiting players, seen a lot of coaches do this. Uh, I had a friend of mine that coached the team. He promised a kid to play quarterback. He got a lucky draw in the hat picks and picked up like a little John Elway Jr. Uh, if he had played that kid all season long, they, they might have won every game. And uh, yeah, don't be promising players. That's the other thing. It's kind of like daddy ball. Those kind of go together. Number three, uh, kids under really 12 U. I mean, it seems like at 12 and 13, they need to start stretching a little bit more. And doing a little bit more conditioning but kind of under that i'm not seeing a lot of that so don't spend more than maybe 10 minutes in practice stretching and doing conditioning uh wind sprints is kind of old i mean you know basically punishing kids by doing conditioning uh, uh that's just that is that's just not working anymore so especially if you're using 30 minutes of your practice time to stretch a condition, that's a little bit too much. The other thing is you're not matching. Number four is matching your roster to your offense and defense. Um, you know, you you really if you if you've gotten my Power Wing Beast Offense playbook, there's like six offenses for kind of different formations in there, offenses, and uh, the reason there's so many is. I may not be able to run one of the offenses that I like, but there's kind of, it's kind of like a wing T system. There's multiple offenses in there. So you can kind of pick and choose. And the same thing with my multi defense, the multi six by eight is I'm able to match with those playbooks, my roster and roster to the, the those, those schemes. So try to make sure you're doing that you know if you're trying to run a spread without a throwing quarterback or a running quarterback or the talent to do that that really doesn't match that well so just fyi there uh this is a big one number five forgetting about special teams uh we see it all the time we're really big on kicking onside kicks and uh you can steal a game easily by uh if the other coach has just not really practiced special teams so make sure you don't forget special teams number six uh especially at younger ages you've got to block and tackle at each practice i mean vince lombardi talked about that really at base football is about blocking and tackling so make sure you're doing that i i know i get bad where we actually don't hit every practice and i've at younger ages they need that a little bit to get acclimated to hitting uh so try to get that in at each practice uh the other thing and i learned this quickly um uh, in my second or third season i started coaching the offensive line is you really need to have an experienced offensive line coach 
coach your offensive line, it will really hurt your team because the majority of your players are probably offensive line. I know for us in rec and even when I coach some select teams, you know, half of our players, maybe more, were linemen types. So don't just have them standing around. Get an old line coach and coach them up, guys. Uh, number eight, man, I don't know how many teams that we won against cannot get their quarterback center exchange to work, especially in a shotgun. I know a lot of you guys want to run kind of a spready type thing or you want to run shotgun because that's what the NFL looks like. But if your center cannot shotgun snap consistently and you're continually turning the ball over, uh, that's really hurting. We've, we've won so many games because of this. So be careful with that. The other thing, especially at younger ages, uh, now look, you may be a unicorn and have a great passer and receiver, uh, but too many pass plays at youth level uh, during the games with low completion rates is just kind of a wasted play. Look, I pass and I need to pass, but I try not to pass too much unless we're really good at it because uh, it's just wasted. I love when a team comes out a young team and tries to pass uh, because for us, we know it's probably going to be a win and you may be different. I mean, you could be that 1%. So if you are go for it, because in 30 years, there's been six teams that, that, you know, out of, you know, what 30, like 300 game or three, I don't know. So uh, yeah, there's only been six teams in my 30 seasons of tackle that had, and I've had two, so I know it does work. And if you've got it, use it. But if you don't, be careful. Uh, number 10. Oh, my gosh. Uh, defense needs to attack in youth football, uh, not sit back and read. A, a lot of folks will run sometimes a 4-4 or a 5-3 in youth, and those, those linebackers are not using any keys. They're not reading, and they're not filling. Uh that's going to get you hurt, especially if you're not attacking maybe with your DNs in the backfield. So take a look at that. I prefer attacking defenses over reading defenses for youth football. So check that out. Let's see. Number 11, uh, players not in correct position. So many times what I think probably should be a fullback. Somebody else has got them at wide receiver. So, you know, just need to learn how to get them in the right incorrect positions because that's a it's kind of an art and a science in its own self uh the other thing is uh you know not adjusting to your opposing schemes in game or before we see this a lot with an unbalanced line offense will come in with an unbalanced line the defense will not adjust or shift to that uh i mean we've got you if you don't shift so that's a simple example there and that really becomes in this next point you're not really doing any type of scouting at all I know some leagues prohibit that, but you can definitely talk to another coach and find out, you know, what do they run or are they running unbalanced? Do they run the beast kind of stuff? So there's that. Uh, size of your playbook, number 14. Do you have too few or too many plays? You know, I've won seasons with Super Bowls with six plays and I've won Super Bowls with a hundred plays. So you know, really kind of match. It's kind of like the roster. You need to match your playbook to your roster and what they can do, what your experience level is. And I will say when we ran a hundred plays, you know, we, we had been together, our backfield had been together about four seasons. So, you know, that didn't all occur the first season. Uh, a lot of coaches, uh, number 15 rookie coaches will change their playbook every week. You know, let's run this, let's try this. This is over and above just adding some plays for an opponent, but that's like changing everything, vocabulary, and, you know, don't be doing that. Um, the other thing is, you know, it kind of goes along with scouting number 16 here is not having the right plays installed to beat an opposing team. If you know they're weak in the C gap or D gap and you really don't have an effective play for that, or maybe you want to stall a right play to beat their weakness. So make sure you're trying to do that. Uh, the other thing is, you know, play calling number 17, it's hard to call plays. So you may want to get a play caller. If you're not good at it, I'm not as good as offensively as doing that, although I can, uh, but not knowing how to call plays and a series and doing all that, that 
can kind of hurt you. Number 18, uh, you really want a playbook that is standardized and proven and usually proven playbooks have a sequence of series of plays that are run and are known. And so you want to have that kind of playbook that has these series to set up, you know, a counter play and a reverse play eventually. So that's kind of that. Uh, let's see. I think oh, it looks like I might've repeated something here, but not having a good offensive coordinator play caller and not really good at calling plays. Uh, you, you really need to have somebody that understands offensive football and your offensive coordinator uh, and knows how to run an offense. Uh, that's really key. If you're not good at that, uh, get an assistant coach that is, that's done it before to be that offensive coordinator. Because one of the things that we see is, uh, yeah, they just don't know how to put it all together. Uh, one of the little things is not putting how the running backs block to the line block and making sure that all works together. An inexperienced OC is not going to get that very well, so make sure you got that. Number 20, uh, not having spotters or your offense and defensive play callers during the game. You know, they're trying to call plays and they can't see everything. If you've got a bunch of other coaches there, have them spotting certain things for you so you can help so that they can help you make these adjustments with your plays. Uh, number 21, impatient coaches. And I had to learn this after several years, but uh, a lot of coaches are not happy with four yard run plays. Uh, I, you know, I became much more happier with four yard run plays when I'm running the beast because I'm just using up the clock. So don't get impatient. If you're, if you're making four yards, three and a half yards of play, just drive that football down the field. Uh, don't don't worry about you're not scoring in two plays. Let's see, number 22. Uh, yeah, this is a biggie for me. I see this a lot since I've been writing playbooks and running the blog. I see a lot of coaches that coach youth, fall, youth football just think they know everything and really don't think they need to study or have any continuing education. They learned it all in high school. I don't read. I don't need to look at this. Uh, I don't care what hawk tackling is. Whatever I'm doing is the best. And a lot of times, you know, they're not winning. So uh, maybe they should kind of look at that. So let's see. Number 23, uh, too little or too much uh, hitting in scrimmages. Uh, I used to not like to scrimmage. I've kind of turned around to where I, I do like to scrimmage a little bit more especially at younger ages, because they just need to get acclimated. From what we're seeing, it takes about four games for rookies really to kind of get acclimated. So you, if you can speed that up with scrimmages, that would be great. Uh, let's see, yelling and screaming is kind of old school. You really need to turn that into more motivating in these times. Uh, you know, I'm using helmet stickers a lot and uh, treats, candy, ice cream, all that good stuff. Uh, number 25, not being able to demonstrate the fundamentals. If you have not played football before or trained or gone to clinics, that's a big deal if you're not able to demonstrate to your players what you're trying to get them to do. It's a huge teaching tool. So learn how to do these techniques and demonstrate those because, you know, if you can't demonstrate those, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there too. Maybe you can learn then and you can demonstrate and you can pass those along to your to your folks. Number 26, uh, kind of like I'm doing now, talking too much. Uh, if you're talking too much in practice and not getting the kids to do stuff, I have a tendency to talk too much. And this is what I have to watch out for. Uh, so uh, make sure you're not talking too much during practice. Uh, the other thing is not having enough drill stations in practice. You know, you want to keep the guys moving pretty quick. At least try to have two drill stations, if not three, to keep the pace up. And that's number 28, keeping the practice moving. You've, it's too slow. Either you're talking too much or you're just standing around letting the kids do whatever. I've been to a couple of practices that weren't my own and I get there and everybody's just kind of standing around doing nothing for pre-practice and you know in between drills everybody's not doing it man that thing needs to move quickly you know not 10 minutes for water it's like two minutes and or even a minute get back over here 
Uh, let's see, 29. Oh, this is a big one. You know, not really understanding how your league rules or how working with the league really works. Uh, I always tried to uh, interview with the league coaches and commissioners when I start a new league to kind of understand and how it all works and try to get involved with the league. And that really helps a little bit. Number 30, uh, this happened to me my first season. I was trying to be too nice and a best friend coach. But if you're too soft and not disciplining the players, they they get too rowdy. So don't be too soft. The other thing, you want to be really firm with your parents because they will take advantage of a soft coach. Be a leader. Make the hard decisions. The same thing with the staff. You know, they're, they're assisting you. They can't take over. You need to be firm with them. Uh, if you're not very confident in what you're doing, uh, that, you know, that kind of becomes your soft issue. So uh, make sure you become a leader and know what you're doing there. Uh, and that kind of gets in this 31 is if you're a poor communicator, it's not easy being a coach because organization and communication are two of the biggest uh, factors of being a good coach. You've got to communicate with the team, the league, your opponent. So you really need to be a good communicator and like communicating. Uh, 32 here is you've got too many coaches on the staff that are just standing around. I think four coaches is pretty good with like two or three helper coaches that are not on the sidelines. Too many coaches on the sidelines uh, want to really start jawing about what's going on. So be careful if you've got it. Uh, older teams, more experienced teams might have a bigger coaching staff. Younger teams may have a big coaching staff, but just be aware too many voices in the room to like too many cooks in the kitchen can be a problem. Uh, 33. Oh my gosh, this is a big one up. Uh, try not to recruit and pick all your neighbor kids that really know nothing about football instead of focusing on getting experienced talent. Uh, I've seen that where uh, coaches will come into our league and basically put all their neighbor kids together or they just pick all the soccer kids. We had one coach do that one season. Uh, that did not work out for either of those. We'll be careful of that. 34, uh, inexperienced tackle coaches that are really good flag coaches come in and think tackle is going to be easy. They could run all this stuff that they did in flag. Uh, in flag, no one's chasing you, trying to kill you and tackle you. So uh, there's a little nerve issue that, that accounts for flag players. There's so many great flag MVPs that cannot convert to tackle the first year. So even the coaches need to be aware of that. Uh, number 35, uh, just trying to be too nice at practice and not having enough discipline. Don't over discipline. Try not to punish the kids, but uh, eventually, you know, some kids definitely require some discipline and maybe a run to the fence. So work on that. 36. Ooh, this has happened to me a lot. Uh, be careful when choosing your team mom. Get that right. Make sure she's a fan of yours. We wait until the season kind of starts to make sure our team mom is on board. Uh, if you choose a team mom where their kid doesn't play a lot, sometimes that doesn't grow well. Same thing with coaches. Uh, look, not calling your team on the first day the roster is out just makes you look bad. Make sure you, make sure you look a little bit more organized than that. Uh, also, if you've got a rain delay or there's a time change, make sure, you know, you're getting out an email and text immediately, because if that's not going out and people are driving around, that just gets them pissed off. So that's a big deal. Uh, no written practice plans probably should have been at the top because if you're not planning, you're planning to, to fail. So get your practice plan written up, even if it's on the back of a nap and before practice. Look, we've had this problem come up and I've been on back medication before. Uh, when you're at practice, you may not want to go to practice if you're too wigged out on back med medication. So uh, make sure you communicate to your parents that uh, you're on pain medication and you're not drunk. So that, all, that will help out and uh, uh, make sure you do that so they don't know that you're, uh, on, you've been on a bender that afternoon. Uh, number 41, drinking and smoking in front of the players at the practice field and after practice. Uh, yeah, you know, the bad news bears kind of thing went out a long time ago. Uh, that was maybe in the 70s, but uh, 
can't do that much anymore. Does it look appropriate? And I don't even think half of that's even legal on school premises anymore for some of you that are practicing on school fields. Look, screaming at refs right now, number 42, is setting a poor example for your other coaches and your parents. And one thing, there's just not a lot of refs nationally because everybody's tired of screaming at refs. You know, screaming at refs, the opposing coach, this this violence that's going on right now in youth sports needs to stop and you need to be the example not the uh, instigator. So if you're not trying to de-escalate situations and you're screaming at the refs, please stop because that's a, that's a mistake. Because I know I've learned because I used to be a screamer. Uh, that's not getting me, me anywhere. And most of the time I'm not getting the calls I want anyway. And it just escalates there. So be careful of that. The other thing is, uh, Man, have enough footballs at practice to make sure the, the practice can run efficiently. If you've got a bunch of uh, drill stations, you probably need, uh, I like to have four to six footballs there. You know, they don't have to be the greatest, uh, especially for linemen or drills. I have older balls and that kind of thing. So just make sure you have enough footballs there so you can run practice. The other thing is not having enough bags or equipment. I I will go out and buy bags. We'll scrounge for bags, make things up, try to do stuff. So uh, you don't need them, but it really helps making the practice more efficient. Uh, Make sure you have your first aid kit. Uh, And also walk the field. Make sure everything is safe for the kids. Uh, Look, forgetting the water and ice for the game doesn't really work. So make sure, sure somebody's in charge for that. Uh, if you're in Texas or like Colorado, make sure you don't forget cool towels, hand warmers. That just makes things go a lot more efficient and better for the players. Uh, look, nobody wants to run wind sprints at the end of practice anymore. Uh, try some drill. There's a bunch of drills you can do now that gets running and things into place versus just running kids for to run them. And uh, our job in youth sports is we want them to come back and play next year. And uh, I don't know about you, but I hated wind sprints. Uh, so uh, I'd rather do something else. Uh, and the other thing they just, I can't believe this still goes on and I've wanted to do it because God knows it happened to me as, as a younger player, but really punishing players, if especially if you're in a rec league on the field after the game, that may not look great anymore. So you might want to think about that. And lastly, and I'm sure I've left some out, but this one may also need to be number one because I have forgotten this a lot. And after talking to some other coaches, they have too. But thank your wife and family for allowing you to coach football because you get into it and you, you really take a lot of time from them and your wife. So make sure you thank them. And at the end of the season party, uh, make sure you thank her and your family then too, along with your players for a great season. Well, that is my list of 50. I'm not sure how long this was. I guess I'll know in a minute. And don't forget mouthpieces too. Hopefully uh, I hit majority of those, maybe the 80-20. Uh, if you guys have some more, leave those in the comments. Would love to hear if I've left uh, a mistake off and maybe you or somebody else has done something and uh, you'd like to share that. Leave me a comment below. Please like, subscribe, hit the notify button, all that good stuff. It helps with YouTube and all the other podcast services to help me in the algorithms get seen more. Hope you're having a good season. Some of you guys are just getting started and uh, for 222. Good luck this season. Hope you're having a good season. This is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org and Coaching Youth Football Tips to Talk podcast. Remember to play for fun and winning is funner. I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.